Well, today, no doubt, you've probably seen a lot of Brexiteers crowing, as today is the official day, really, that the UK starts its ascension process into joining the Comprehensive Trade Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think that's the full <laughs> mouthful. Um, well, the CTPPP, I just call it the Pacific Partnership. It's a lot easier to call it that. So let's just agree to call it that throughout the video. But at least you know what I'm calling it when I refer to the Pacific Partnership now. So everyone's caring about this. That Oh, my God, this is so fantastic. This is going to be amazing. However, is it? Because, first of all, there are a couple of big problems. For now, it goes to each of these individual countries to agree if the UK gets access to actually be able to join fully the Pacific Partnership. And there are still big questions from Canada and even New Zealand over the whether we would actually agree to some of their uh, deals that they have. Because one of the big things you need to understand about the Pacific Partnership is the difference between the Pacific Partnership and the single market. So just so you understand, the single market is this is everyone's standards. Everyone agrees this is like the minimum standard. You can't go lower than that. Now, you can go higher, but you can't go lower. And that everyone ideally is playing on this level playing field, that everyone is agreeing to follow this. It's a standardization of rules and regulations. That's what the single market is. That's where it was always constructed to be so that no one can undercut anyone when it comes to this. However, however, the Pacific Partnership is vastly different to that because it is not a alignment of regulations. What it is instead is a signing of a recognition of to accept other people's standards, even if they are lower than yours. And remember, some of these countries that are in the Pacific Partnership use, well, almost at to a point, slave labor and wage slavery and use very, very low manufacturing methods that would be banned here in the UK. Now, this creates a very big, significant problem because if we're here, and let's say some of the other countries are down here in terms of a product, we have to accept that. And what does that mean for your UK economy? What does that mean for your manufacturing here? Well, it essentially means we have opened the floodgates to lots and lots of very, very cheap imports that can drastically undercut our home manufacturing base to a point where companies in the UK cannot compete. So they've got two choices. Either A, well, <laughs> you close down because you can't compete, or you move to one of those countries. Now, I hate Donald Trump. I really not, shall we say, the biggest fan. But in 2016, where Donald Trump was warning about the America joining the Pacific Partnership, saying that this would accelerate the move of, of companies uh, from America to these other countries, because that was meant that it was far, far cheaper for them to send stuff over here, and it was destroying America's manufacturing base. Now, of course, Trump never really did anything against that. Of course, it was just a, you know the big popular spin. But Trump was actually right in that regards. And this is what we have opened ourselves up to. A potentiality of a lot of UK companies just saying, well, why are we in the UK anymore? Might as well just move to Malaysia because we can hire the same workforce at a fraction of a price than we can in the UK. And remember, a lot of people in the, the Brexit sphere voted for Brexit because they wanted to end this. They saw that as that's why we are voting for Brexit. Brexit was going to be an end to globalism and an embracement of protectionism. Of course, that's not what's happened. And bear in mind, in these other countries, there are lots of movements, lots of heavy, heavy criticism from uh, countries in Australia, New Zealand, 
uh, Canada about their participation in the Pacific Partnership because of these reasons. Because remember, it is not a this is this is the this is the the line we're all going to agree that that is the level we are going to go to, and no one is going to go lower. However, as I said, the Pacific Partnership is not about alignment. It's about mutual recognition of standards, even if the standards are lower than yours. So that is going to cause a big, big problem uh, in the future for a lot of, of UK economies and, and things like that. And bear in mind, this ain't going to benefit our economy. You've seen a lot of people say, oh, it's 0.08%. Well, it's actually potentially even lower than that at 0.02%. So this is not economically benefit. But what this represents is a massive victory for Japan. And I'm going to read this part from Politico because I think this gets to the heart of the point of, of this, that this is not a victory for Brexit, it's not a victory for free trade, and it's not a victory for the UK of joining this new uh, trade agreement. What it is, it's a massive victory for the Japanese, so that they can essentially stop China from joining the Pacific Partnership. So, this comes from Politico, and this is going to read this part. So, for Tokyo, the benefits of the UK membership of the CPTPP have always been clear. The deal is, quote, not a mere trade agreement, but a strategic agreement, Japanese leader Kashida's press secretary, uh, Hiroko Ono, told reporters during his trip to London at the start of the year. Britain's membership does bolster the Japanese agenda of building political, economic relationships within the region and helps counter Chinese influence. Noted ex-British diplomat Simon Fraser, former the head of the UK Foreign Office and now a managing partner at consultancy Flint Global, said, in a political sense, Fraser said, Britain's membership is not the insignificant expression of the Indo-Pacific tilt in British foreign policy, set out in London's own defence and security strategy known as the Integrated Review back in 2011. When it comes to Taiwan, Britain's presence in the bloc makes the calculation of for China more difficult. The Japanese diplomat quoted uh, above added that they said, uh, they hope that makes China more prudent against doing something bad. Britain joining is, quote, a powerful signal, agreed Peter Ricketts, the former UK Foreign Office Chief and Britain's first national security advisor between 2010 and 2011. But Tokyo shouldn't take from that that it's going to be a huge shift of diplomatic, economic and security efforts towards Japan and the Indo-Pacific, he warned. That's not going to happen, given what's happening in Europe, noted Ricketts, pointing to the UK's ongoing support for Ukraine to push back the Russian invasion and Britain's own limited resources. And as the UK Labour Party continues to rise in the opinion polls ahead of an expected general election in 2024, it is far from clear whether the next UK government will put the same emphasis on Britain's role in the Indo-Pacific as it does on repairing the UK's Brexit-battered relationship with the EU. It is in our global interest to be in the Pacific bloc, said the Labour shadow uh, foreign secretary, David Lammy, but he told the trade conference last month, I do not want to overshadow it and its effect on our economy. And as I said, it's not going to be good for our economy because at the end of the day, if you start to see jobs leave the UK, which ultimately that will lead to because, well, why wouldn't you? If you are in this fantastic, quote, trade agreement where you've now got easier access to the UK, why should a UK company or even, let's say, another big multinational bother even setting up in the UK or remain in the UK when it can just completely move its operations out of, well, the UK and do it that way? But of course, there are other concerns about being in the Pacific Partnership as well, notably the fact that, well, companies can sue uh, our, our government essentially for having higher standards. And that is something that we are going to see. In fact, Canada and New Zealand have already expressed, uh, their farming industries have already expressed that, that that is what is going to happen to us because we have higher standards where it comes to uh, sort of the production, our animal welfare stuff. And of course, uh, how we sort of treat our animals com compared to us. They have a lot lower standards compared to us. So 
our, our government is going to get sued a lot by these companies and they're going to happen in secret courts. And the only way we're going to know about it is because at the end of the year, at some budget thing, the chancellor is going to have to stand up and say, yeah, we spent X amount on defense in these secret courts. So all these Brexiteers crowing about how this is a, a fantastic Brexit victory and a victory for the UK, it is not. This creates so many, ironically, of the problems that many of the Brexiteers complained about, uh, you know, that the, the whole globalism problem that many Brexiteers did not want more of. They wanted far less of that. But of course, that's not what they're getting. Um, this is going to accelerate, I think, a lot of companies just, well, moving out of the UK to uh, countries in the Indo-Pacific where they can take advantage of the cheap labor. Because, again, why hire British workers where you can hire workers in Malaysia where you can pay them pennies compared to where you would have to, you know, pay a living wage to people in the UK? Um, this isn't going to be good. And I've said this before. When you look at other countries around the world, trade agreements like this are big, big politics. And that's not even getting into some of the stuff where it comes to like rules of origin checks that is going to be uh, also become uh, heavily different, which is also going to dent our trade with the EU even more. And as I said, look, it doesn't matter that we join the Pacific Partnership. That's not, you know, Japan or Australia suddenly isn't going to become our most important trading partner. That's always going to be the EU because of trade gravity. Countries always trade most with their closest neighbors first before anyone else. So don't expect any of these uh, Pacific Partnership countries to suddenly jump up to like our number two or even in the top 10. That's just not going to happen. Um, but again, this is more Brexit to your fantasies and you're probably going to see a lot of ridiculousness written about uh, this in the coming days. And no doubt we will be going over some of that stuff as well. So as always, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And of course, as always, thank you very much to uh, anyone who helped and support the channel. Like I say, even if you do, just click the like and share button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one of donation called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee. There's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there is the uh, Pony Club down below as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, we'll see you all next time.